Well, it is one of the most anticipated weekends for the theater in some time with Barbie and Oppenheimer set to release. It also marks a halt to, you know, every iteration of sequels that we have seen of either the Fast or the Marvel franchise, some original programming. Imagine that. Let's bring in Richard Krause, film critic and host of the podcast Last Call with Richard Krause. And I, for one, maybe that's why I haven't gone to the movies in 10 years, Richard. <laughs> it's because I'm just not interested in those franchises. 10 years? Wow. I've seen more movies today than you've seen in a theater in the last 10 years. That's correct. Um, and, uh, there's a lot of great movies uh, that, you know, have come and gone over the last little while in this summer, but uh, this is the weekend that's the big showdown. So you've already got uh, Mission Impossible hanging around from last weekend. So that's going to continue to do quite well, drawing in crowds. Uh, and then you have Oppenheimer and Barbie, and they've been calling it the weekend of Barbenheimer. A lot of people uh, are looking for Forward to both these movies so much that they're going to sit through both of them uh, in the same day. So that's about five hours of sitting in theater. So you have to be a big time that's movie like fan. That's like one to Avatar do that. movie. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But but it's worth it. It's worth it. Both movies are great. They both offer something very different, both very different experiences. Uh, but both of these movies are working at a very high level. Both are very entertaining. OK, so we got to talk about what this means for the industry going mm -hmm. forward. Do you think that this does halt what has been, you know, what studios have just really been doing is, you know, iterations of things that have already existed, mm -hmm. building on franchises? Do you think this makes them feel a little bit more um, comfortable about investing in original content. Well, we'll see. I mean, what we have right now is uh, one of those directors that has a great deal of name recognition. Christopher Nolan, director of Oppenheimer, uh, has a built-in fan base. So no matter what kind of movie he makes, uh, the Christopher Nolan types are going to go out and see that film. Barbie is an international brand. It's an existing IP. So, uh, you know, I don't know that that's going to convince people at the studios to all of a sudden drop everything and start making a more original original films. But if you look at Barbie yesterday alone made $22.3 million in Thursday previews, uh, that puts it up against the last film uh, that made that kind of money in previews was The Batman with Robert mm. Pattinson made 21.2 uh, and ended up with a weekend at $134 million. Uh, so if Barbie does those kind of numbers, we'll be seeing more Barbie movies probably coming uh, down the pike. And as long as are directed by Greta Gerwig, and as long as I have the same kind of sensibility uh, as Greta Gerwig brought to this one, I'm okay with that because this is not just simply a two hour long uh, advertisement for Barbie dolls. This is a movie that has some real substance to it. There's this also is a fortunate timing that it didn't occur right as the uh, strike mm -hmm. for the actors was taking place because now we're unlikely to see many of them on the red carpet, and that could have a big impact for TIFF, the Toronto. International Film Festival. I mean, what does that look like, um, you know, without the stars? Well, if the festival is still going, or if the strike is still going on by September, the festival absolutely will be going on. Uh, it will look a little different, although they've just released a press uh, statement in the last day or so saying that 70% of the films that they are programming this year are from outside of uh, the SAG union's purview. So mm. uh, they will be movie stars from around the world coming, and certainly there will be directors walking down the red carpets and that sort of thing. But the George Clooney's and the you know sort of big American stars that we're kind of used to seeing uh, decorating these red carpets are probably well I'll tell you they'll be very scarce. Uh, SAG has said uh, in no uncertain terms that actors should not be out there promoting films. So no late night television performances, no red carpets, none of that kind of thing. Well, and there's no late night really because there's no writers either. Yeah. Um, oh, you know, at what point does this start to hit in terms of a content drought? We'll really start to see it, I think, in September. On television, it's the summer right now, a lot of reruns, that kind of thing. There's still stuff in the pipeline. Uh, in uh, network television, we'll start to notice it in September, October. Uh, the streamers, I think, will probably compensate for a lack of American programming by uh, 
gobbling up things from foreign markets. So we're going to start seeing more shows from Korea, like the Squid Game, dubbed into English. Uh, we're already seeing German and Japanese shows uh, that are coming uh, to Netflix and other streamers. Um, and, and what that does is it allows them to have that steady stream of content that they so desperately need. If you go to whatever your favorite streaming service is and you go to the homepage and there's nothing new on it, well, you just keep moving on. You go to the next streaming service. They need to feed this beast and they will find a way to do it, whether SAG is on strike or not. Um, so that means a lot of uh, foreign uh, television shows dubbed in English. I think in the movie theaters, around Christmas into January, February, we're going to start seeing big holes in the schedule. Some of those will be filled with independent films, uh, but I think uh, probably uh, by the end of the year, you'll start to wonder, you know, where are all the big time movies? <laughs> all right.